market monitoring systems to uh, improve results for your members and clients in both your personal training, small group training, and actually large group training um, for that matter. So most of you have some experience or at least some awareness of this, but we're going to start out by just reviewing a couple slides to, to help everyone wrap their head around how these systems work. And if you look up on your screen now, this is a typical display from a heart rate monitoring system. If you look on the left, that's what might appear on flat screens in, say, a group exercise, small group training area, cardio training area, or whatever. So on the left is kind of a close-up of a screen. And we're going to be talking about several different uh, systems. We're going to be talking about four systems today. Um, and we'll get into more depth as we go into other slides. Now, on the right side, you can see how that would look in an actual live setting. So in the right slide there, you see a studio in Chicago called Sporting Sport. And people are doing a high-intensity interval training program. They have monitors on. And you can it's blurry in the background, but you can see that big screen. And that big screen has a bunch of tiles. They're also called blocks. So if you look on the left side, let's take a look at what one of these blocks would have in it. So if you see on the left side, you see the close-up there. If you look at Jack, his tile, or his block as some call it, is in green. And that's associated with a particular heart rate zone. It might be 60 to 70 percent, 65 to 75. It depends on the system, how it's set up. You'll notice it says 65 percent. That is Jack's percentage of his maximum heart rate. Very important number, and we're going to be talking a lot about that number and why it's important in your programming and why uh, it's so important to monitor that. You see the 114 in there, in the black in the center. 114 is his actual heart rate. So at that moment in time, Jack's heart rate was 114 beats per minute. Of course, those, those numbers are going to be changing in a live setting all the time. Jack so far in that workout has burned 91 calories, so that's motivating to Jack, letting him know where he is, where he could go. And then you see that 23 up in the corner. That's a point system. And this is actually a screen from a company called Performance IQ. The one on the right is from a company called MySound. And again, we'll be covering these in more depth as we go through this. So again, how do these systems work? First of all, people have to be wearing some type of a device that is going to have some system for monitoring heart rate. If you look on the left, most of us have heard of Polar. That is a chest strap monitor, I call it. So you have the strap, which is going to actually go against your skin. And then the part where it says Polar there is actual transmitter, which is sending a signal, which is sending the heart rate signal out so it can be interpreted and displayed. On the right-hand side, you see a different type of monitor. That monitor, as you'll see, if you look at the models in that slide, they have it on their forearm. It could also go on their bicep. I believe this technology can also even go around your leg. Why would you do that? Well, there's a, it's a lot easier to get compliance for people to wear an armband monitor than a chest strap monitor. And the good news is that these monitors work really well. And we'll talk a little bit about them as we move forward in the presentation. So you have to have some system. By the way, people ask me all the time, what about the wrist monitors? Long story short, we have some experts on here we can talk to at the end of this in heart rate monitoring. The wrist monitors just are not where they need to be in terms of accuracy and effectiveness, particularly during exercise. So really, from my standpoint, you need one of these two types in order to have accurate monitoring. And speaking of monitoring, so how accurate are these systems? The chest strap monitors, they're going to actually have electrodes built into them, and they're touching the skin. And they're going to actually pick up something called an electrical wave of depolarization. What is that? Every time your heart beats, before it beats, there's an electrical signal. And so they're literally picking up that signal. And this is exactly the same thing that happens if you go to the doctor, you ever have those sticky things put around your chest to, chest your, to test your heart, that's called an electrocardiogram. These are really exactly the same technology. So how accurate are they? They're extremely accurate. Now, there can be interference issues, and that's a whole other story. But the technology is very sound, and there's a number of different companies we'll be talking about that offer you the ability to use this technology. Now, the second system was that armband type system. And this is also very accurate, but it uses a slightly different technology to, to monitor what's going on. If you've ever been in an emergency room, or um, you may have had the thing or seen someone in a hospital where they put this thing, it's like a clamp on the end of your finger. It doesn't hurt. There's a little flashing light, right? And that monitors your pulse and your, your blood oxygenation. And that type of monitor is actually looking at blood flow. 
So it's giving you your heart rate, but it's not looking at electrical stuff. It's looking at the flow of blood. It's on your finger and your finger, if it's in your arm and your arm. These are also very accurate monitors. The only exception to that would be, in my personal experience, if you do something really strenuous with your arms, particularly if you're gripping something really hard and it's on your forearm, the signal may get disrupted a little bit because temporarily, when you're doing that type of thing, what happens is when you contract the muscles in your forearm really strong, it can temporarily interrupt blood flow. And remember, in this type of monitor, it's looking at blood flow. So you're going to get, you're going to get a, a transient error, and, and the heart rate may be inaccurate. But other than that, the system works very, very well. Advantage of it, big time compliance, right? Almost anyone will put something on their forearm. Whereas for certain people, there's, there's a reticence maybe to use a chest strap monitor. So they're, they're both available and both very accurate. Um, in order for those monitors to work, the key thing to understand is in order for them to work, the monitor has to be matched to the person in the software. And, and what you need to input to match is it really needs, the system needs to know the person's height, their weight, their age, and sex. And it's going to use that information to calculate some things. The first thing it's going to do in many of the systems is calculate maximum heart rate. And as many of you probably know on this call, there are various formulas to estimate maximum heart rate. And if we don't have an age, we have no idea what their heart rate would be, right? Unless they happen to know their max heart rate, and it is a very rare individual who has any idea of what their max heart rate is or has, ever been, has it ever been tested. So all of these things use an estimate. They, most of them also allows you to measure an accurate heart rate. One of the things I can send anyone on the call if they're interested is there's a very effective method for assessing maximum heart rate that does not involve taking them to their maximum heart rate, yet it's very, very effective and simple. It's a test you can use. And the nice thing about doing that test is it's going to really customize this even further. But just to keep moving, so the system needs to know an age so it can estimate a maximum heart rate because intensity, when we use heart rate monitoring, is all about percentages of maximum heart rate. So to make sense of any given heart rate, so say someone has a heart rate at 120, that information by itself really doesn't tell you anything. It tells you their heart's beating 120 miles a minute, but what does that mean? If you don't know what percentage that is of the person's maximum heart rate, you really can't do anything with it. So, so we need to get some estimate of maximum heart rate, which is usually done via age. It's also going to give you, so once it has that information, it can show you, as I showed you in the other screen, it can show you percentage of maximum heart rate, and that's super important, and we'll talk about why. It can also calculate training zones for each person. So depending on the programming you're delivering, you may want someone to be at 70% of max heart rate. Or for, say, high-intensity interval training, you want them to be 85% or higher. So it will calculate those zones, but it needs that information, height, weight, age, and sex, to do that. The other thing it's going to do with this information, it's going to provide a pretty accurate assessment of their calorie burn. So how does it do this? Well, there's a very strong relationship in the scientific um, literature between how much work you're doing, your heart rate, and your oxygen consumption. So it goes like this. The more work you do, the higher your heart rate, and the higher your oxygen consumption. The more oxygen your body is consuming, the more calories you are burning. In fact, if we want to directly and completely accurately measure caloric assessment, that's when we stick the tube in your mouth and we measure oxygen consumption. And, and we also measure um, respiratory quotient, which gives us a measure of what you're burning. And that's done vis-a-vis -vis measuring your um, carbon dioxide output. But obviously, that's not practical. So can we accurately get a good assessment of caloric expenditure from heart rate? And the answer is we absolutely can. But we need that information. So remember that we have to link the monitor to the person. And you'll see why I'm stressing that, because it's an important detail to implementing these systems. So why would I do heart rate monitoring? Like, what is the benefit of using heart rate monitoring systems? And hopefully it's starting to be obvious. It's going to allow the people you're using it with, whether you're using it with one client or a group of clients, and the coaches, it's going to allow you to see all this information, as I showed you in the beginning, in real time. So what you're going to see is you're going to see everyone's heart rate in their own tile up there. They can see it, right? They're going to see what training zone they're in. 
They don't even have to look at the percentage because if you design your programming, you might say today our goal is to keep you in orange for X amount of time. Another program, which might be lower intensity, might be green or blue or what have you. But the point is that you now know the person's exercise intensity. This is a big deal because what does this do? It ensures that the person is training at optimal intensity. Intensity is the single most important workout parameter by far. So if you don't know it, you don't know it. This is where people don't get results, right? So now we know it. We're not guessing. The person's not guessing, and you, their coach, you're not guessing. We can also train a group of people, and we can provide one-on-one -on -one coaching now, right? Because since I know the intensity, I can tell one person, you need to ease up because they're outside. They're exercising too intensely relative to themselves and another person needs to speed up or do whatever. You really can't do this properly in a group setting if you don't know their intensity. So what else do these systems do besides during the workout? Well, at the end of the workout, they're going to send an email report to each person, and it's going to show them their heart rate response and caloric expenditure. Very motivating. We'll take a look at one of these reports in a moment. The trainers and clients can also access this data anytime from anywhere. So imagine you're a personal trainer, and you tell me, you work with me twice a week, and you say, Greg, we agree that you're going to do another cardio workout half hour at 70%, which is not an intense workout, but you feel it's important as my trainer that I do that. Instead of wondering if I did it, if I'm wearing a monitor hooked to an online system like this, even if I'm not with you, guess what I can do? I can check and see, did you do it? How are you doing? Very, very, very powerful for working with people. Very, very powerful. Most of these systems have free apps as well. So people can see everything on their phone. And as we all know, everyone loves their phone. So all these apps are available for Android and, um, and, and, and iPhone. Great stuff. Really brings this and, and packages it as we're going to see in a moment. So what does this do for you? It's constant motivation, guys. It's constant motivation and validation of what you're doing as a coach or a one-on-one -on -one trainer, and it's validating that your program is working. They see it. It's third-party validation. I can't overemphasize how powerful and motivating this can be. So here's an example. This is the polar system, one of the systems we talk about. And this, at the end of a workout with a polar system, the trainer or coach, instructor, can hit a button, and everyone in the room is going to see their tiles, and they're going to see how much time they spent in each of the training zones. So if we look up in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see a Lisa K up there. So let's see what Lisa did. It's going to show you in the red zone, orange zone, green zone, blue zone, and other zone how much time. I know that's blurry, but if you were in an actual room, this would be completely clear. So that you can, she can see what she's done, and the coach and everybody else in the room can see what they've done, and the coach can explain what they're looking at, and this is a really key component. It shows you that Lisa was at 79% of her predicted maximum heart rate as her average. Nice piece of information, right? We can show that the maximum intensity that Lisa was at during the workout was 91% of her predicted maximum, and we can, we can show that we estimate that she burned 543 calories. Nice to know. Real nice to know. Is that motivating for Lisa? Trust me, it's real motivating. What do you think Lisa's going to do the next time she comes in? She's going to try to beat that number. That's not such a bad thing, right? So this is another example from Polar, and all these systems have some similar capabilities, and we'll, we'll dig into that more in, in, in subsequent slides. This is an example of a Polar person. This is a workout summary, an individual summary. So if they go online or they look at their email and they say, what did I do? That squiggly line there shows you where their heart rate was throughout the workout. This is very educational for clients. They begin to realize, oh, there's a relationship between how hard I work, my workout intensity, my calories, and my results. They start to own it. They start to be accountable for their own results. And this is what we need in order for people to, be, to get the results. On the right-hand side, you can see how much time did, they, did, did this person spend in each of the zones on the top, the workout time, um, average um, heart rate during that time, and the calories they, bar they burned. So one of the things that's very hot right now is HIIT training. And for those of you who might not know that acronym, HIIT just stands for High Intensity Interval Training Programs. Really, really super hot, right? This is what P90X, Insanity, CrossFit, all these different programs. There's a ton of ways, including spinning type classes, where I can do high intensity interval training. And why is this all the rage? Well, the research 
has clearly shown, we, we, there's just no doubt that this stuff works. But for the member, what, why is it so popular? There's three reasons. There's three key benefits in my mind. There's many, but these are the three. One, it's a quick workout. Half an hour is all you need. Guys, if you're doing hip properly, they can't do much more than a half hour, right? So soup to nuts, they're done in a half hour. Is that appealing to people? Of course it is. Their biggest objection to working out is what? Is time, right? So we have to provide them the most, the biggest bang for their time buck, and that's what HIT does. Not only that, it provides a pretty darn big calorie burn during the workout, and if they have a heart rate monitor system, they can see that, but it also elevates caloric expenditure in the form of EPOC, we'll talk about further, for hours and hours afterwards. Big deal. Also, not boring. It's not boring. If you're in a half hour class and you're doing intervals of any type, trust me, you are not falling asleep. There's no time to fall asleep because we're not standing around a lot. So one of the reasons spinning is popular is that spinning has been conducted in more or less a hit format for some time. Um, and one of, that's one of the reasons it's popular. We can, we're, we're working hard, we get better results. So, so what are the challenges to implementing HIT programs and workouts in, in your club or studio? First one in my mind is if you're not using heart rate monitors that both you, the coach, and the person can see, the cur you, you can rest assured they're probably not in the right training zone. How would you know if they're in the right training zone? The answer is you don't know. Rate of perceived exertion is not an accurate way to, accept it, to, to assess exercise intensity. So you don't know what you don't know, and if you're not using this tool, you don't know, period. It's like running on a treadmill and you don't have any speed data or elevation data. Is it important to have that? The answer is of course it is. It's important while they're doing it, and it's important because it gives you the ability to monitor results over time. You cannot coach hip properly without knowing intensity, period. Guys, that's just a fact. You can't. So if you think you can guess how hard someone's working, guess again. That, that, that's not an accurate or effective way of doing it, and it doesn't motivate people either. Without heart rate data, one of two things can happen, both of which are not good. The first one is dangerous. One, you think the person's not working that hard, but unbeknownst to you, their heart rate is pegged, because how would you know that looking at someone? And the answer is you don't know. So you could be telling someone to exercise harder because you think they're not exercising hard enough, and lo and behold, guess what? You're pushing them into a dangerous place. So one, it can be dangerous. Two, a lot of people, I would guess most of the people, are not exercising hard enough. They think they are. By having that data that you can see and they can see, trust me, it's a game changer. They will pick it up. And you have the confidence of knowing you're telling them to pick it up and that you're not pushing them too hard. This is a huge deal. Imagine lifting weights and you had no idea how much weight the person was lifting over time. You had to guess. Like you literally couldn't see the weight. Just think about that for a second. That's what we're doing with metabolic conditioning, HIIT training, and other cardio training if we're not using heart rate monitor. We just don't know where they are. Why, why, why wouldn't we want to use this tool? So one of the things I mentioned is that there can be a very high calorie burn after a high intensity interval training workout. Most of you probably have heard this term, EPOC. EPOC stands for excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. To the layperson, to the consumer, the member, the prospect, what I say is this is afterburn, right? That's a term that they can understand. So the afterburn from HIT can mean significantly elevated metabolic rate and calorie burn for up to 36 hours after a HIT workout. Is that a big deal? It's a really big deal, guys. We're talking numbers like 100, 150 to 250 extra calories over the resting rate over the next 24 to 36 hours. Is that a big deal? It's a huge deal. It, it, it's a huge deal for their results, too. And if you explain this and they understand it and can begin to visualize how to get there, they're going to like you a lot and they're going to like your programs a lot. So that you guys understand this clearly, because it's important to be able to understand this and explain it, and this will all get related back to heart rate in a moment. If you look at that graph on the left, you look at O2 consumption. During the actual high-intensity interval training, I'm doing anaerobic intervals, which simply means I'm working really, really hard. I'm working so hard that my body cannot deliver enough oxygen at the cellular level to be aerobic. So I'm anaerobic, which means I'm creating, and you can see it there, an O2 deficit. I'm not delivering enough oxygen to be aerobic, so I'm in deficit. So what does that mean? It means that after you're done, you have to repay that deficit. And you do that 
by increased respiration, increased tidal volume, increased metabolic rate after the workout to repay that deficit. This isn't a theory, guys. It's a fact. We know this occurs. The science has been known for years. So, but notice something here. The area inside the O2 deficit, the, the dotted lines there on the left top, is much smaller than the O2 debt. And this is where the payoff is. It means that there is a potential to burn more extra calories after the workout than during the workout, right? And the last thing I want you to be conscious of here is this epoch is higher the less fit the person is. So a less fit person who exercises at the right intensity is going to get a higher afterburn, bang for their buck, than a fit person. That's a fact. It's a nice thing to know and communicate to people who are just starting exercise, and it's a nice thing for them to be, become aware of. So, so what does all this have to do with heart rate? Well, it has everything to do with heart rate. So in order to have a HIIT program and truly know that you're producing these benefits, there's a requirement. And here's the requirement. The heart rate needs to be between 85 and 100% of maximum heart rate. If you're not getting to that intensity level, guys, it's not HIIT. It's not. You know, that's where the research is. It's unequivocal. You need to be working hard. At these heart rates, that means that you're operating at a high percentage of your overall uh, oxygen consumption capability. You're driving the system high. You're going anaerobic for intervals. You're resting a little bit, and you're repeating it, right? You need to be in this range for 10 to 15 minutes, really half the workout or maybe a little bit longer, to really maximize calorie burning during the workout, but more importantly, to maximize that epoch. Very, very, very important, right? So if you don't know the heart rate, guess what, guys? You don't know. It's that simple. You don't know. And they don't know. And they certainly don't see that it's working. So hopefully this is you beginning to piece this together and understand why this is such a powerful tool, particularly for this type of pro uh, programming. Rate of perceived exertion, which is that 1 to 10 scale, or Borg is, I think, to 20, where how hard is it, very hard. Guys, it's just not reliable. And if you don't know this, you slap a monitor on someone and you try working. I do it myself. There's days where I think I'm not working hard. I look at that monitor. It says my heart rate's 120. I know it should be more like 140. You know what? I pick it up. So the reality is either you know or you don't know, and, and it's really that simple. The last bullet here is super important, guys. The workload, how much work that's necessary to get an individual to 85 to 100 percent is different for each person, right? It's different for each person. So if I have an older person, let's take me, I'm 55, so my max heart rate is going to be considerably lower than a lot of people um, younger than me, okay? And let's say that I'm out of shape. I'm not that out of shape, but let's pretend I'm out of shape, right? The amount of work I'm going to have to do and the, and the exact heart rate that I, I, I need to attain is completely different for me than it is even for a 40-year. Completely different, guys. So don't think with a room full of people that you know this by looking at them, because the fact is you do not know them. That's why this is such, power, this is such a powerful technology and such a game changer, because people get better results. And it also is phenomenal for marketing and sales. So, so what do you have to do to use one of these heart rate systems? What's necessary? To really deploy them in a health club or studio system, you're going to need large flat screen TVs. How large? They need to be big enough that each person can see their block or their tile that I showed you. They ought to be able to see that or you can't use it. So the coach and the people have to see it. Um, the flat screen should ideally, in my mind, be hardwired directly to the output device. And we'll talk about what is an output device in a moment. In the case of MyZone and Performance IQ, for example, they use an actual PC. So you have to have a PC which you purchase for them. The signal gets transmitted to that PC and gets pushed out. Now, for I, now the other folks I'm talking about here, Polar and the Heart Zones folks, they use an iPad. And, uh, and I prefer that for a number of reasons to push the signal out. But that's what the output device is. You're obviously going to need chest straps with transmitters and or those armband monitors for participants to borrow and purchase. People have to have some monitor that sends a signal to something so it can be pushed up and shown on the screen and pushed up to the Internet. You also want good Wi-Fi availability. And the reason is that, remember, 
if we're hooked to the internet, all this data is getting pushed up to the internet. It's getting pushed into the cloud so you and the people can access this data. Very, very, very important component. We'll talk more about why in a moment. So this slide depicts, and this is a slide from the Heart Zones uh, folks. This is their smart heart system. And we'll go through how this works. So if you look up, hopefully you can see my mouse. I'm shaking it up over the number one there, which it says sensors there. So the first thing you need, oh, sorry about that. Let's go to next. Um, let's go back. I apologize. Previous. Okay. So there, I need some kind of a sensor. Whether it's on my arm or chest, I need a sensor, right? It's then sending a signal through the ear. Different things use different signals. There's ants and Bluetooth. You don't necessarily need to understand that. That signal's got to get picked up by some kind of an, an antenna. In the case of the Heart, the smart heart system, there's a separate antenna. That's a very small device, guys. It's like smaller than a, a cell phone. That's like an antenna. It gets the signal. It then sends the signal to another device. In their case, an iPad. There's an app on the iPad that, that helps you make sense of all this stuff. And then the device, number four, number five there, pushes out the information so it's displayed on the screen. It could be displayed just on the iPad, but if the iPad's hooked up to, to the big monitors on the wall, what happens? We see everything up on those monitors. Last but not least, in step six and seven, the data, if I'm connected to the internet with that device, is getting pushed up to the cloud, and now I can do it. I can run reports. If I'm one of the participants, I can show my best friend on my phone what I just did. I can put it up on social media. So instead of just saying, I got a great workout at XYZ Fitness, what can I do now? I burned 800 calories at XYZ Fitness. and I can put my graph up there. How powerful is that? Guys, it's a total game changer and differentiates your club, your trainers, and your offerings from everybody else. So very, very, very powerful system. How, how do you make this work? It's not just buying the equipment. You've got to train your staff. And you've got to really put, put, make an investment to train them, not money so much as time and energy. It's not difficult, but you have to do it. Everybody's going to know how to use the system. All these systems, the great news, they are very, very easy to use. And we'll go through each system and tell you the advantages and disadvantages and give you links so that you can talk to these companies. You can, but you also have to market and promote the benefits of market heart rate monitoring, right? You have to let people in your club know you have it and you have to use it. You should be sending emails about this. You should have posters and flyers up explaining what this is, showing them something, getting them into interact. Most importantly, you have to have demo classes. So I'm affiliated with lots of studios that run heart rate monitor training, and everybody, every time they work out, uses this. And when people come in for a trial workout, they get hooked up to that monitor. And we'll talk about how you do that. And it is something that completely differentiates you as a studio or club and, is the, it, and really can make an enormous difference in your bottom line by attracting and keeping people. All your staff should understand this stuff, and they need to be articulate and explaining. So a member walks up and says, you know, what's this whole heart rate thing about? You've got to be able to explain two things quickly, succinctly, and in a way that they understand. How does heart rate monitoring work? What does it do? And most importantly, right, you've got to tie that into why should I care? What are the benefits for the individuals? This isn't tough stuff, guys. It's just something you have to practice through. Each of the people making these systems can help you with scripting in that process and how to do that. So everyone should really have kind of a 60-second elevator speech, every staff member, that can deliver effectively to address these two key points. When you're bringing these systems in, you should be demoing them with all the staff. Everyone should wear and experience this, because if you haven't experienced it, seen it, watched it, you don't understand it. And as soon as you do, guys, you're like, wow. This is simple because it really is simple. It's easy to use and understand and it improves your results. So everybody loves it as long as you position it properly. Another topic that's really, really super important, and remember this if you're looking at systems, is loner heart rate monitors. So it's really essential to have loner belts so that people can experience the system. So let's give you an example. Let's say you run a studio or you run a health club and you have a heart rate monitoring programming and you're just bringing this online, right? If you don't let people try it and see it, don't expect them to buy into it. Our entire industry is based upon try before you buy, and this is no exception. Let them experience it, which means that you have to have a 
system in place and that the heart rate monitoring system you buy has to be easy to use in order to loan monitors, right? First of all, you have to have lots of loaner straps. The straps, whether it's armband or chest strap, they're going to get wet, right? Because people are going to sweat. They need to be washed and dried. There's a way to do that. And then you have the transmitters, right? The transmitters, you can't put, you can't get wet, but you can pull them off and wipe them off with alcohol. So let's imagine you have a studio with 20 slots and that you're going to use heart rate monitor. You need at least 40 straps and 20 of the transmitters. Why do you need that? Because 20 people are going to use the transmitter in each class, and then you need to have two sets because you have one group in the class, and in most places I'm going to run back-to-back -back classes, right? So you, you get the idea here. So it's just a simple matter of having enough on plan, and then you have to have procedures in place to assign the monitor and to ensure people do not walk out with them. As I said, assigning the monitor means there's a way to enter the information into the system quickly um, so that that monitor gets personalized, right? Remember those first slides. I need to know the per that system needs to know there's height, weight, age, sex, right? Important stuff. You're also probably going to want to have at least some extra monitors on hand because what you're going to find is people are going to say, I want my own. That's beautiful. Then you sell them one. But you got, your loaner program has to be ready to go or you're never going to get this off the ground. One of the biggest mistakes. Keys to success. You must fully commit to heart rate monitoring and key classes and small group training if you want to use it. So I'll talk to clubs and they'll go, we tried it, it didn't work. And what they did is they put it in and they put a heart rate monitor in a case by the front desk and expected thousands of people to buy. Guys, that doesn't, that, that's never worked, it never will work. You've got it, your instructors have to know how to use the tool and you've got to let people experience it. And it's not hard to do it, but you have to plan to do the steps I talked about. If you do this, and you make a commitment to it in appropriate classes. So in a yoga class, is it appropriate for people to be looking at heart? And the answer is they don't need to look at it. That's not what that class is about. But in a spinning class, could it be appropriate? You bet your bippy. Can it be appropriate one-on-one -on -one when you're doing hip training or interval training? Absolutely it's appropriate. In fact, I, if I'm a personal trainer, I'm using it with every one of my clients, right? So you, wanna, you have to make that required gear for participation in classes. Clubs that do it, do well. Now, this isn't a negative thing where people are like, why do I have to do it? If you position it properly, people want to wear it. If you let them experience, they're going to say, great. This is no different, guys, than telling people that when they go in a yoga class, they need to have bare feet. Many yoga studios do that. Why do they do it? Because bare feet works better for yoga. You get better results. And if you understand how to explain that, people don't bitch and moan and complain about that. They say, great, I'll take my shoes off. But you've got to explain this. It's no different than saying you have to have a yoga mat. So when people say this doesn't work, what I'd politely say is you haven't made it work. I know it, I, this worked in every single club where they followed these rules, and they love the system. Trainers should try to use it with most of their clients, right? Can you, I, I hope you can see that this is a game changer for producing results and accountability. Think about this. They're getting constant validation of results because they get a report after every workout, and they're seeing it. So it's not, you know, one of the most frustrating things to people is they have no sense of progress. If they use a heart rate monitor, what's going to happen to their heart rate over time? It's going to go down, right? What is that? What, if, you're, if you're doing your job, what are you saying as a trainer? That means that you're getting more fit, and now you can work harder. What's happening with their calories? It's going up, right? There's constant validation of results with this in a way that's tangible and easy to understand and motivates people. And motivation is the number one thing our clients need. So your instructors must be trained to deliver an enthusiastic and articulate explanation of the system and benefits for appropriate classes. And then at the end of the class, they need to pull up the summary and they need to highlight those results, explain them to the group. We don't have to point to individuals. We, have, we can globally cue everyone to look at their tile and explain to the group what they're looking at. This is not tough to do. You just have to put a little time and energy into working this out with your staff. So let's talk about the four systems. The good news is these are all good choices, and they've all been around for a while, excellent companies. The first one is MyZone. So what do I like about MyZone? MyZone has something called MyZone Effort Points, aka NEPs, they call them. And these are points that people get, and they're effort points, meaning that if I'm unfit, I can earn as many MEPs as Lance Armstrong in the same room. So it, it keeps us on the same level. Our calories are going to be different, right? Because he's doing more absolute work. He's got a higher work capacity. And the fact is, calories are about work and oxygen consumption. That's what they're about. So big 
strong, big guys, big tall guys who are younger and have a high work capacity and are larger are going to burn more calories than a small female. That's not good or bad, it's what it is. So this, this MEPS system, and a lot of these guys have a similar system, allows us, once we get a significant group of people to hold contests, we can work as a group. So I can say to the team, let's collectively as a group, if we do 3,000 MEPS, everyone gets a shake during this workout. So there's lots of motivation. Now, MyZone's about to launch an entirely new system with new monitors at URSA in March. They're switching to a Bluetooth signal system. So what I'd suggest is do not purchase anything from MyZone until you see that system and see how it rolls out. Right? Major weakness to their current system. The system is not set up to easily match loaner belts to individuals' data. So if someone walks in, particularly in a studio, in a trial workout, and if you're running a studio, you get lots of new people coming in to try it. Remember, I've got to put that data in and match it to the monitor. Long story short, it's not easy to do right now with the current MyZone system. It's just not. I wish it was. It isn't. Now, if someone's purchased the belt, there's no problem. But remember, the person's got to try before they buy. And if you have a lot of people trying before they buy, this administrative detail can be a real nightmare. So you want to look at that. System does not show the workout summary at the end of class, meaning that if you're standing in the room as an instructor and I'm teaching a class, I can't see a workout summary. Now, the participants can go online and go see it, so, so why do you care? Because when I pull that summary up, like Polar does and some of the other system, the instructor can explain to that person what they're looking at. This is huge, guys. Two minutes will go a long way. Oh, I see. I spent this much time in this zone, and he's telling me I should have spent more time. They begin to understand it. Another thing I don't like about my zone, you cannot use the monitor anywhere else and at the same time see your heart rate. You can use the monitor, but there's no way to see your heart rate unless they make an additional purchase of a, uh, of a watch. Um, it doesn't work with an app like other systems, and you have to come back into the club in order to upload your data to the Internet. I, personally, there's a logic behind that. I think it's, uh, it's not the right approach. The system is also closed and it's only compatible with MyZone. Now this may be changing, meaning that the only monitor that works with MyZone is MyZone. That's it. So you're going to have people who say, I have this great new polar monitor I got for Christmas, can I use it? And they really don't want to hear that they can't use it. So this is, this is a negative to that system as well. And again, none of these are, like, I, MyZone's a great system, has advantages, but these are the, these are the facts. Polar Club Flow. Polar has a nice system. It's a Bluetooth-based system. It supports almost all polar monitors. Why do you care about polar monitors? Polar is the most dominant force. So the reality is if someone has a monitor already, chances are which monitor they have a polar. Would they rather use their own than having to use something else? The answer is, of course, they would. Right? So that, that's nice that it's compatible with almost all pole monitors. Some of the older ones, it's, it's not. Um, they also have made it very quick and easy to match a loaner to the person's data. This process is done on an iPad through a free app. You just need Wi-Fi. Big advantage over MyZone. Big, big, big advantage over MyZone. It's also considerably less expensive, the new system, currently than the current MyZone system. I don't know where MyZone's going to roll out, but right now, if you were buying, it's considerably less expensive. There, there basically is a monthly, uh, a monthly license fee, and that's about it. You need to purchase other equipment, but you're not really purchasing that equipment. Um, from Polar other than the monitors. It also has a great free app. So I, if, I, if, I ha if I buy a monitor, if I choose to do that as a participant at your club or studio, I can download a free app and boom, my monitor, if, if I've got a decent phone which accepts Bluetooth, it works with my phone. So now I don't need to purchase an extra watch. Everything goes to my phone. Everything my phone goes where? It gets uploaded to the Internet. Very elegant um, and that's the way it should be. My zone currently doesn't, they have an app, it doesn't work quite as well. Again, you can call them and check out their latest demo on their new system, which is coming out in March. Um, the Polar Club Flow provides a workout summary at the end up on the flat screens, just, just the way I showed you guys. So that's a big deal to me. So that's another feature I really liked about Polar Club Flow. Heart zones, the smart heart systems, and I have a couple of those folks on the call with us if you have technical questions when we're done with the presentation shortly. Like the Polar, it uses an iPad interface. I greatly prefer this to using another computer. Why? iPads are cheap. iPads are really simple to use, and they're portable. 
big thing. So you can manage their entire system and you can assign loaners very quickly and easily with hard sounds just like um, Polar. In fact, it might even be maybe a little bit quicker with them, but they're both good for that. It's the only system where you can interface the system both through iPad and an internet connected PC. So let me give you an example. You're at the front desk. Five people show up five minutes before the class. They've never taken the class. They want to monitor. We have to assign them. You can use an iPad to do that, but you can also use any internet connected PC to do that. None of the other systems allow you that flexibility. It's kind of one or the other. And what happens when these classes start, guys, is people show up five minutes before, so there's, it's hectic getting people ready, getting them their monitors. So this is not an insignificant feature to this. Uh, there are no ongoing, uh, oh, actually, the third bullet. It's compatible with many individual apps for use when the person's not in club, including Polar. So if you use these guys and the monitors that they will sell to you, the great thing is that their monitors and their system is compatible with, any, with, with lots of apps, and there's lots of cool heart rate apps. So you're, it's a very open system, and I really, really like that. There's also not, no ongoing license fees. So unlike Polar, MyZone, and Performance IQ, uh, who have license fees somewhere around 150 a month, there are no license fees. There's, there's one time setup, and that's it. You're done, and forevermore you get those software updates. So something to take a look at as you look at these systems. There's system is really portable. It is the most portable system. So what does that mean? It means I can grab an iPad, that little antenna, and in summer, could I do boot camps programs and have heart rate monitoring? The answer is boom. Snap your finger, you're doing that. This is really cool. If you get in touch with these guys, they'll show you some cool videos of people doing that. They've been in schools with this programming with lots and lots of kids for a long time. Very well established company. Definitely say that you take the time to look at them as an option because I think they're an excellent option. Last but not least with Heart Zones, it's an open plan system, meaning it's completely open plan. What does that mean? Basically, you can use any of these monitors. So if you have a polar monitor that puts out a signal, it works with theirs. If you have a MyZone monitor, it works with their system. If you have a Garmin monitor, many people do. If you have a Sunto, if you have a Soshi monitor, this is a big deal, guys open access. So another great feature to um, the heart zones is that fully open access. Last but not least is performance IQ system. This is an ex excellent system as well. Again, all these systems are excellent. Just giving the highlight. It works with any monitor with the exception of Polar. So it does not interface with Polar monitors, but from what I've been told from these folks, works with everyone else, uses Ant Plus. If that doesn't mean anything, if you contact these guys, they can kind of walk you through what's the difference between Ant Plus and Bluetooth and, and what does that mean to you. Also, the system is simple and easy to use for loaning monitors. It interfaces with either the chest strap type or the armband type, like the heart zone system. It's going to provide a workout summary at the end of the workout, so I like that. Like the heart zone system, it can accept and display power output from most spinning bikes. So I'm going to show you a, a video in a moment. So heart zones, the heart smart system, and performance IQ are the only ones I know of where if you have, for example, the newer bikes that, that show people their watt output, you can actually set the system up in a spinning room so that on the screen, and I'll show you what this looked like, now I know as a participant how many watts, which is how much work am I doing, and my heart rate. Guys, that's like, you're not training like a pro. Unbelievable, the program options that become possible when the coach and the participant can see that data accurately in real time and then look at it after it's done. This is, this is Tour de France stuff brought down to the basic level, so real game changer. Their system right now, they say, is priced at about $750 up front. You need to buy their PC, and then there is an ongoing monthly license fee. If you have multi-studios, some of these can be, made more, can, can be more. So you're going to want to check. Don't quote me on prices with all these guys. Um, and again, I don't think you can make a bad decision with any one of these vendors, but you really want to think through how you're going to use it, and you want to have them take you through, and you want to ask questions to, to know about the way these systems work. So here's a, here's a list of the vendors, and you're going to get sent this entire presentation. Everyone's going to get sent this. So what I'd suggest if you're interested in that is reach out to each and every one of these contacts and companies and say, take the time. It'll take maybe a half hour for any of these guys to run you through a demo of their system. Obviously, they're going to give you their high and low points. It's totally worth taking a few minutes. The great news is they're all great systems, and they, will, and they all can be game changers in terms of 
differentiating your facility and your training programs. I, I can't honestly imagine working without them. Now, what I'm going to do, we're not done yet. I'm going to, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get a video here um, that we're going to play, and I'm going to show you this video. So I'm going to turn the video on here as I talk to you, and notice how the tiles are changing. So this is the heart, um, heart zone smart heart system, and notice you're seeing the heart rate change. You're seeing sometimes the colors might change. And actually, I'm going to back this up a little bit. And we'll watch that again. So this shows you on the bottom, their display, notice you're seeing how much time you spent in each of those zones. So that gives you the idea of one display. This is going to show you a different display. And this would be a display if you also wanted to use step counters or pace counters along with heart rate. So this system is very flexible, as you'll see. So you'll see up there that it's displaying the zone in terms of color, percentage of max heart rate. It's showing you the person's pace, what their zone they're in, the number of steps they've taken, etc. So another type of display that's available with, with these guys. And we're going to move forward then. And I'm going to show you another one which is an indoor cycling display. So this is what it might look like in a class. And notice, you see the person's heart rate, you see their power output in watts, and you also see their cadence. So this is a very, it's a very quick example of what this would look like if you're actually standing in the room looking at this in real time. And I showed you some of the reports in the, uh, in the past. So just, guys, this is something you should be budgeting for and looking at in, um, in, 2000, um, in 2015. Um, if you do this properly, regardless of which system you do, I guarantee you, you're going to get your ROI out of this very, very quickly. So now what I'd like to do is see if anyone has any questions. I spattered off a lot of information. If you do, great, I'll answer it. If I can't answer it, I'll get Jody or someone from uh, uh, um, uh, Heart Zones to answer the question. Greg, we have a few questions. The first one being, are there different monitor systems that work better for smaller, larger clubs as opposed to other companies? Yeah, great question. So the key issue to me, yeah, the, the key differentiation between full service club and this technology, and when I say full service, you know, your typical larger health club, you know, that's not a studio, not your studio, a health club where you might have a cardio floor, you might have uh, group exercise studios, um, etc. And you have members who are coming in both working out on their own, working out in groups, and working out in one-to-one. -one. In those situations, to really get the most bang out of this, you're going to want to scale the system up and put it everywhere in your club. Because if, if you're my personal training client and I use this with you in, say, a personal training area, why in the world would you want to restrict me to just seeing my heart rate in the personal training area. In that case, if it were me, I'd want to put flat screens up all over the club so that people can see their heart rate, even when you're not with me, right? And I also, in a big club environment, I may, I may have a lot of people using one of these systems on their own, meaning they're not working out with a trainer. Is there any reason you can't do that? And the answer is no. And in fact, my zone is really kind of, in my opinion, more focused on that application. In other words, they love trainers, interactors, and instructors, but it's, it's really set up kind of for individuals to be able to use on their own. Now, any of these systems can be used on their own, and it has to do with how many rooms are you putting the system in. You may have to have more or less antennas and receivers. How many flat screens do you need, and where do those flat screens need to go? And then the most important thing was that loaner process. If you're using this in a class, you need to have, and you exp and you want to have people, and you want to have people coming into your club regularly as prospects and trying a heart rate program. That loaner process has to be super easy. So right now, I'd say that my zone, unfortunately, is not very easy. So that's a real strict. If you run a studio, one of the studios I work with has 70 people, new people, every week coming in to try a free workout, 70 people. Some days there's as many as 25 people, right? That means that you've got to get a monitor on 25 people. And when do these people show up for the class, by the way, to try the class? Five minutes before the class. So if that process of assigning a monitor is not easy, you've got a real problem. Now, if, if you don't care about that, 
if you're if you're not thinking about there's some clubs for example they'll put in my zone and they just sell people a monitor and the only people that can use it are people that buy it i think you're you're selling yourself short because i think if you demo these systems and you show people how they work people will want to use the system so if you're just saying we're set up to sell them i i, I don't think that works very well hopefully that's helpful and answers the question greg our next question is how many loaners do you suggest having on hand Great question. So let's let's take a studio and, and, and talk about that. We have a studio and our class capacity is 20. And that and, and that's what we're doing. If I had a studio with a class capacity of 20, and that's what I was the application I was focusing on, I would buy 50 to 60 straps so I could wash and hang them dry. And I would buy 40 i buy 40 of the transmitter pieces. Why? Think about this for a second. I got 20 people in a class. Every one of those people needs a clean, dry strap, and they need a transmitter, right? That thing that clips on, right? So everybody in that class needs one of them. Now, because most of the time you're going to run back-to-back -back classes, I'm going to need 20 more of everything ready to go, right? So that I have 20 people on deck. So as soon as that class is open, I'm not having to swap monitors. The 20 people waiting to go in the class, they're set to go, right? Now, if everyone buys a monitor, that's wonderful. I think that if you make everyone buy a monitor, I think that can work, but you're still going to always have a lot of trials. So my answer would be, whatever your capacity is in your heart rate monitoring classes, I'd want double that at any given time. And hopefully that logic makes sense. And that answers the question. If not, I can talk to people offline again, and I can specifically answer your questions based on your specific needs. Now, if you have a large club, right? If you have a large club, and you're deploying it all over, those numbers could go up, right? But typically, I'm not going to provide a loaner monitor to everyone in a large health club every time they come in. I, that, that's not practical. They need to start paying something for that. But in classes or in personal training, I may package. So you need to think through your offering and how you're going to uh, package it, and then think through what I said based on capacity, and I think you'll be able to make a good decision in terms of how many monitors you need for your particular application. Our next question is, can individuals be identified by user IDs versus their name to protect their privacy? Great question. And the answer is yes. Most of these systems, you can pick a nickname. Not all of them, but when you go through a demo, see that. So that is a very good point, and it relates to your queuing. You do not queue. You don't point it out on an individual and say, you know, pick it up. What I do when I'm queuing in an interval class, for example, is I say, during a recovery interval, go, everyone look up, look at their tile. Where are you in your tile? Where should be? If you're over, if you're in the red zone, I need you to ease up. If you're in the green zone, you're not working hard enough probably. So I cue them globally to look at themselves. For people who have a problem, you can call yourself in most of these systems, you can have a nickname, anything you want. So I don't really need in a group to know who's who. I'm going to cue globally. So hopefully that answers the question. Our next question is how does heart smart systems measure power? Ah, great question. So I'm going to answer this if I'm wrong. Jody will you know, chime in here. Um, it does not measure power. It receives input from devices that does. So I'm sorry to make that clear. So for example, uh, Star Trek and Matrix both have bike systems, uh, lots of them do now, where they're measuring watts, right? Their system is capable of interfacing with all these systems so that the watts that are being measured on the individual bike can be transmitted and shown up on the screen. So basically, their system is going to be set up to communicate with the bikes, and the bikes have measuring systems on them. There are actually, there's actually one heart rate system from a company called CycleOps that estimates watts, which is power, from heart rate, but that's not the preferred thing, and it's, it's not designed for this application. So hopefully that answers that question as well. And those are all our questions this afternoon. Thank you, Greg, for presenting today. Great. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions, my email's up there. Feel free to reach out to me directly or call me my cell phone. Chess is going to send out, um, send out this presentation and a PDF to have for everyone, and I wish you the best of luck in 2015 with your club or studio.
I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. As Greg said, you'll be receiving a recording of this webinar within 24 hours, as well as the PDF file of the PowerPoint. I would also like to remind everyone of our NPP webinar membership. For $50 a month, you receive registration for a minimum of two webinars, as well as our access to our webinar library. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.